the TikTok uh, legislation has passed the House of Representatives. Now, I got an email the other day. In fact, let me, I, I want to pull up the email. I, I, I don't want to disparage the guy. Let me see if I can find where it was. I replied to the guy's email. He's a listener who's emailed on occasion. And this actually, I think, is worth me reading to you because I suspect that some of you likewise are have a similar situation. Yes. All right. So I got an email from a listener the other day. I listen to the podcast. I know, I know almost every day and thoroughly enjoy your perspectives most of the time. However, this TikTok thing is a little annoying. As I'm sure you yourself have never been on TikTok, I actually have. Seen a TikTok, I have, or even know what the TikTok app looks like, I do. It is frustrating when you presume to tell people like myself that use TikTok on a daily basis for entertainment and time-passing purposes about what's on TikTok. Are there pro-Palestinian uh, entertain uh, TikToks? Absolutely. Are there pro-Biden, anti-Trump TikToks? Absolutely. But there are also just as many pro-Israel and pro-Trump TikToks. As for the spying, it makes me very suspicious when public figures worry so much about what they do on their phones and who might find out. I, for one, could give two blankety blanks if the Chinese communists know what kind of porn I watch or know that I enjoy looking at the female backside. So maybe the people up in arms about that should actually be examining themselves. Luke 12, 2, 3. That was him to me. Um, I, and again, I, I'm not going to give names. I don't mean to disparage him, but I suspect there are none. Um, in, in his Luke 2, 3 reference, uh, 12, 2, 3, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. That which you have spoken in the ear and in closet shall be proclaimed upon the house tops. Um, here's the problem with this. We have a growing body of evidence from our intelligence community that uh, shows a deeply disturbing and sinister pattern of collaboration between TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, and China. In fact, ByteDance is based in China. They say TikTok is headquartered in Singapore. Actually, ByteDance is a Chinese communist country that is bound by the National Intelligence Law of 2017 and the Counter Espionage Law of 2014 in China. It must cooperate with intelligence requests by the People's Republic of China and hand over requested evidence for investigations. This is CNN from June 8th, 2023. In what appears to be a first, a former employee of ByteDance, TikTok's Beijing-based parent company, has outlined specific claims that the Chinese Communist Party accessed the data of TikTok users on a broad scale and for political purposes. In a court filing this week, the former employee of ByteDance, Yin Tao Yu, alleged that the CCP spied on pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong in 2018 by using backdoor access to TikTok to identify and monitor the activists' locations and communications. Also from Bloomberg from August 15th, 2022, China's internet giants from Tencent Holdings to ByteDance, parent company of TikTok, have shared details of their prized algorithms with Beijing for the first time, an unprecedented move aimed at curbing data abuse that may end up compromising closely guarded corporate secrets. The Internet Watchdog on Friday published a list describing 30 algorithms that firms including Alibaba and Mituan employ to gather data on users, tailor personal recommendations, and serve up content. While the public list stopped short of revealing the actual code, it wasn't clear the extent to which internet firms may have revealed their underlying software to regulators in private. The algorithms that decide which TikTok videos, WeChat posts, and Instagram photos users see are considered the secret sauce of many companies. China adopted regulations in March that require the firms to hand over their algorithms. TikTok has complied. Here is Ted Cruz on MSR on CNBC this morning. Well, it depends. It depends what the bill specifically says. I, I will say this. I'm glad the House is acting. Uh, I am deeply concerned about TikTok. I've been very vocal about my concerns in TikTok. We had the CEO of TikTok testify before the Judiciary Committee just a few weeks ago, and, and I vigorously question him. Really, on two fronts, I'm concerned about TikTok. Number one, I'm concerned about Chinese surveillance and espionage. 
TikTok is controlled by the Chinese Communist government. It is, has 170 million users in the United States, and it gives the Chinese government the ability to monitor, number one, what they're saying, number two, their physical location using GPS, number three, potentially what they're searching for and what they're doing with their phone. All of that is concerning. We also know that China has used it to target journalists in particular going after them on TikTok. That's one set of concerns. A second set of concerns is the propaganda that the Chinese government pushes on TikTok and pushes in particular at kids. And I think it is deeply, deeply harmful. You know, you look right now at, at the Israel-Hamas war that is unfolding. Every age cohort of Americans, when asked, Who's in the right? Who do you side with? Overwhelmingly, Americans side with Israel, except for one age co cohort, and, and that is 18 to 29. And, and we see TikTok in particular pushing pro-Hamas propaganda. I think it is deliberate. I think that is designed by the Chinese government. And, and so I'm glad the House is acting right. to, to address what I think are very serious risks. That was Ted Cruz again talking on CNBC this morning. Jimmy, uh, I, I, listen, I... I, I I don't think the Chinese do care what porn you're looking at to, to quote your email to me. I, I don't actually think they do. Um, uh, what I, what I do think, however, is that they care deeply about your children. If you have children and they are trying to backdoor propagandize to your kids. I mean, for example, um, so Jacob Helberg, is a member of a congressional research panel called the U.S.-China Economic Security Review Commission. They've been doing research on TikTok, and it turns out that you are 67 times more likely, according to the Wall Street Journal, 67 times more likely to see pro-Hamas propaganda in a fresh algorithm on TikTok than you are uh, pro-Israel propaganda. That's a choice in TikTok's algorithm because as, as emailer Jimmy notes, there's plenty of pro-Israel propaganda, but you, you get a fresh TikTok account, you're 67 times more likely to see pro-Hamas propaganda. Not only that, we know that China has already used TikTok to monitor and spy on journalists and others. They, they, we, this isn't a hypothetical, it's real. This legislation has passed the House. It goes to the Senate. Um, whose side are you on here, um, Ted Cruz or, well, Ilhan Omar? We just had one of your Democratic colleagues, uh, Congressman Moskowitz, on the show last night. He suggested that, for example, when it comes to the Israel-Hamas uh, war, that China is using TikTok's algorithms to ramp up divisions in this country. And that's one of the concerns that he has in terms of national security. Do you think there's any validity to that? What I, what I do think that people are uh, finding discomfort is the fact that for the first time uh, in our nation's history, Americans have access to real images of the horrors that are experienced by Palestinians daily. Uh, and the onslaught uh, that is taking place, this horrific uh, assault on, on Gaza, uh, really is being streamed. Uh, to every single person here in this country. So we no longer have to rely on legacy media to get. Notice she doesn't want to actually answer the question because she can't combat the data. It's true. Now, Thomas Massey, the congressman from Kentucky, he claims there's a back door in the legislation that will allow the government to take over any website and shut it down for election disinformation. Thomas Massey is a recipient of large donations from Jeff Yass. Jeff Yass is the ByteDance investor who has persuaded Kellyanne Conway and Donald Trump to change their minds on TikTok. He's heavily invested in TikTok and opposes the legislation. He's donated to Rand Paul. He's donated to Thomas Massey. He's donated to the Club for Growth. Uh, it's not surprising that uh, these libertarians who he's donated to are coming out against it. What is surprising is that Thomas Massey is lying about the legislation, and he actually is lying about the legislation. And, and I'm not going to mince words here, even though I like the guy, it's a lie. Uh, the legislation is very clear. It only applies to websites that are controlled by Russia, China, and North Korea. It allows judicial review. And the controlling interest in the underlying companies 
relates to those countries. And even then, it doesn't actually allow a shutdown of the platforms. It would force divestment of control by Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. Iran's in there as well. This isn't a free speech issue. This isn't about shutting down TikTok. Now, China has said, the Chinese Communist Party has said it would rather shut down TikTok than allow ByteDance or force ByteDance to sell it. So China would rather give up the billions of dollars that come from a sale. They'd rather give up those billions of dollars than have ByteDance give up control. Why? Because China controls ByteDance, which controls TikTok, which operates the surveillance app in the United States. It's curious to me that Jeff Yass, who would probably make a lot of money off a of sale of TikTok, is, is opposed to it as well. Elon Musk, who makes a lot of money out of China, he's come out opposed to it. Tucker Carlson, who these days just seems to hate America, has come out against it. It is wild how these supposed conservatives on social media who blast the United States all the times are suddenly on the side of, of China and Russia all the time, predictably. This legislation that has now passed the House and goes to the Senate, Mark Warner and Marco Rubio have come out on it and support it after an intelligence briefing yesterday by the intelligence community. They've come out and said it needs to pass. It looks like it could pass the Senate. Joe Biden now says he'll sign into law. Just, just consider this. Just consider this. The legislation would only apply to applications and websites controlled by Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea. And it would not shut those websites down, but would force the divestment of controlling interest from those companies. That's it. That's what the legislation does. And if they refuse to divest, then they would be the websites and apps would be shut down, but they could have a judicial appeal to show that these countries don't have the controlling interest in the companies. You do have to begin to wonder why these people are on the side of Ilhan Omar in China. Why they're mischaracterizing the legislation. Why they're mischaracterizing what TikTok does. TikTok is a massive surveillance app by the Chinese Communist Party against the United States and Western powers. It absolutely should be shut down.